My speech is not going to be as gloomy. <laughs> I just want to say first that I love food. I mean, who doesn't? I love a good steak. I love fresh fish. But we also have to face the fact that as 21st-century food consumers, we are stuck between a rock and a hard place because food consumption is a problem. We are now seven billion people. On this planet, half of us live in an urbanized area. That means that we are dependent on others for food. We do not produce our own food. We have also discovered that some of our food sources are finite. One such source is fish. What I'm going to be talking about today is that the fishing crisis that we experience, especially here in the West, was actually started already in the Middle Ages, and it continued through the colonization of North America. We are looking for a solution to this problem today, but to find the solution, we have to find the root of the problem. So my question is: Does the solution to the future challenges of marine ecosystems lay in knowledge of the past? What I'm going to be talking about specifically is deep sea fishing of Atlantic cod. We consume a lot of types of fish, but cod has been the backbone of the modern economy. That backbone has now been broken. Due to overexploitation of marine ecosystems, because face it, to fish is to exploit. Deep sea fishing of fish in the cod family, because cod is a collective name of several species of fish. Deep sea fishing of cod was spread throughout northern Europe. By the Scandinavian diaspora during the Viking Age, we know that in the British Isles, food consumption patterns were changed before and after the arrival of the Scandinavians. In Orkney, it has been demonstrated that before Scandinavian settlement, marine consumption was 30 percent of the diet. After the arrival of the Scandinavians, it was 60 percent. Throughout the Middle Ages, fish consumption in Europe increased, and that was connected to the spread of Christianization and the institutionalization of the Catholic Church. The medieval liturgical year, the church year, had over 100 holidays of varying degrees of holiness. During a holiday, you should not eat meat. So instead, people ate fish. Specifically, dried cod from Norway and Iceland. We know that Icelandic and Norwegian dried cod was sold as far south as Italy. It is one of the foundations of the power of the Hanseatic League, and this is because dry cod, when it is dried properly, it is very light. It weighs almost nothing. It is easy to transport. Long distances, and it is edible up to five years after production. And this is crucial in a time when we do not have the facilities to store food the way we do today. There were two types of dried cod: stockfish being one of them. Stockfish is air-dried. Cod. 
The head has been removed, but part of the spine remains. So it looks almost like a fish still. It is made from cod that is between 60 and 110 centimeters long. And if there is anyone in this room who today can say that they have seen a cod that is 110 centimeters long, congratulations. It can only be made in areas on the planet where you have zero degrees centigrade during a period of several uninterrupted months. And that is in northern Norway and Iceland. The second type of cod is clipfish. It is also air-dried cod. The head and the spine has been removed, and the fish is flat. It is made from smaller fish, because they are easier to break open. And because they are flattened, they can be dried uh, during a wider temperature span. We are still talking about approximately zero degrees centigrade, but in a wider temperature span in those low temperatures. And therefore, it can also be manufactured in more places. We know that in Orkney, Shetland, and the Hebrides, the production of clipfish was brought there by the Scandinavians. It is not an indigenous way of preparing food. In the 12th century, cod fishing was commercialized. This is due to the church. Because when the church became more powerful, it could enforce its holidays with fast. Fishing was specialized to Atlantic cod only. From before, you, you fished several types of codfish. Now it's the Atlantic cod. And it is the um, size of clipfish and stockfish that is being standardized. In time, this affected the reproduction capacity of the cod. As you can see on the screen here, by systematically removing the larger species from the ecosystem, the smaller uh, individuals in the ecosystem could grow larger. So when you had a cod that in the Middle Ages was 110 centimeters long, it was between 8 and 10 years old. When we move into the industrialized era, a cod that was 110 centimeters long was approximately five years. So we have the same size fish, but it is half as old, which means that its reproduction capacity is lower. In the 15th century, we know that European fishermen started venturing out into the Atlantic. They were Basques, Portuguese, and Britons. We know this because there is actually preserved from the 15th century pages from a Basque Icelandic dictionary. And this also shows that Columbus was definitely not the first. The Vikings that arrived in Newfoundland in the 11th century were not the last. And it also proves that in the Middle Ages, they knew that the Earth was round. The reason why they ventured out into the Atlantic, we believe, are two. First, we know that in the early 14th century, there was a climate change in Europe. And the climate grew colder. This is what we call the Little Ice Age. The second reason is we believe that the marine ecosystem of the North Atlantic were starting to show signs of stress. So when the Basques, the Portuguese, and the Britons ventured out into the Atlantic, they eventually encountered a new ecosystem, or a new ecosystem to them, the LME, 
the Northeast Shelf Large Marine Ecosystem, which stretches approximately along the coast of Newfoundland in present-day Canada, down the East Coast, present-day uh, present United States, to Cape Cod. However, by the time of the 19th century, the LME, too, was showing signs of stress and over-exploitation. And the reason for this is because the LME was feeding two continents, Europe and North America. And both of these co continents experienced a rapid population growth and changes in its transportation systems, which means that all these more people that were living on the continents could get access to fish. You didn't have to live that close to the coast anymore to get access to fish. This resulted in the LME being overexploited and species becoming extinct. Birds, marine mammals, fish, the birds became extinct because they were used as bait when fish were caught. We know that in New England, when the Europeans arrived, there was an indigenous species of sturgeon that is now gone. So, the question I posed at the beginning, does the solution to the future challenges of marine ecosystem lay in knowledge of the past? Well, what I have shown here is that the problem of over-exploited marine ecosystems is a problem long in the making. So the solution that we come up with to solve this problem so we can feed the people on our planet in the 21st century has to be a long-term and sustainable solution. One such solution could be development of more sustainable exploitation methods, that is, we better learn how to fish properly. We have to develop equipment for catching fish that is more geared towards the type of fish that we actually wish to catch. Because today, we have fishing quotas. And that is a good idea in theory, but we don't have the tools to match it. And that is why Tons of perfectly fine, edible fish is being thrown overboard because they are accidentally caught in our nets. Just the other day, there was a report about a man in the United States who was out trawling and accidentally caught an 800-pound tuna fish. If we have the proper tools, that tuna would not have been caught. And he didn't mean to catch it either. He didn't want it. Another problem that we have is that government subsidies, it helps us in the short term, but does it help us in the long term? Because we know that there are places on Earth where people, where it's cheaper for people to import fish than to actually live of their own catch. And last but not least, even in this case, we can learn from the past. How did people fish before the industrialization of the fishing industry? The ecological knowledge of pre-industrial man is greater than ours, because they lived more in tune with ecosystems than we do. 
A lot of the things that we today call science, they would call everyday life. So I believe that the solution to the fishing crisis lies in the creativity and the ingenuity of mankind. We are an adaptable species. We are an intelligent species. We are a creative species. And that is why we have come to become the dominating species on this planet. But the problem's solution to be sustainable, you have to know where it's coming from. You have to know the root. And the root, inevitably, to all problems, to everything that is going on in society today, lies with history. So, my conclusion will be, to find a solution for the future, we have to look to the past. Thank you.